So then once you're in the category of people that have an acoustic neuroma, the key thing is to figure out, you know, how should I be dealing with this? And many of you may be in the part of your journey now where you're trying to figure out what do I do with my acoustic neuroma? And other people may have questions about, I had mine treated, you know, was it the right move? What do I do next if it comes back? So as a physician, I always look at several key variables to try to figure out, you know, how do I manage this? One key variable is going to be the size. Another key variable is going to be the symptoms. You know, what exactly is going on that, that brought this to your attention? And then another key thing is obviously you, the patient or, you know, your loved one. Uh, there's a lot of variables involved with trying to manage these things. And you have to take them all into consideration when, when you're thinking about what you ought to do and is it the right move for you. Uh, when you move on to management, there's management by not doing anything at all called observation. So you're not doing anything invasive, but you're taking some tests or, or you're watchfully waiting. And then there's treatment options. When should I treat? Why should I treat it? How should I treat it? And we'll get in specifically to some of those and more specifically into gamma knife. So when you look at key variables, you know, when you Google things, you can Google acoustic neuroma and you can Google vestibular schwannoma, but it's very hard to get into the details that might be specific to you or your loved one in terms of size or symptoms. So if you were to say, okay, let's look at size differences, what you can see here on this scan is these are two different scans, but they're both called acoustic neuromas or vestibular schwannomas. And on this scan, you've got a small lesion, this little white thing here, that's not causing a lot of pressure on the brain stem, but might be causing hearing symptoms or balance problems. And then on this one, you have a very different vestibular schwannoma that is very large and that is compressing the brain stem, the cerebellum, and probably presented very differently. Both of them called the same thing, but clearly very variable in their size. And then when you get into symptoms, most people present with some hearing nerve problem, either muffled sound or even a ringing or a humming in their ear. Um, secondary to that, people can present with some form of intermittent or constant balance problems. Very rarely do we see the facial nerve irritated. Um, sometimes we see the nerve next to it called the trigeminal nerve that can give you some numbness in your face. It's not usually directly related, but it can be indirectly related. And sometimes we see people come in clumsy because their brainstem is compressed or they have what's called hydrocephalus. So very variable, but all these variables make a difference when you think about what should I have done. And then obviously the patient. Some people come in in their 80s, other people come in in their teens, and some people come in with other medical problems or on blood thinners. So all of these things come into consideration and you have to be very, very specific with all of them before you make a recommendation or choose a treatment. So when we get into management options, one of the things you have to think about is, oh, should I just observe this? Maybe you had a migraine or maybe it was found for other reasons and now you find a small uh, vestibular schwannoma or acoustic neuroma, but everything else is fine. So oftentimes what we'll do in those situations is observe. You might get MRI scans on a regular basis. You might get hearing tests on a regular basis and just watchfully wait. And sometimes that's appropriate and sometimes it's really not. Physical examinations, watching for symptom progression sometimes could be enough. Other times and more traditionally, you'll have a, a lesion that's maybe pushing on some structures or taking up a lot of space like that second MRI scan that I showed you. And, and that's when we think about the more traditional surgery where maybe we're going into the hospital and there's an ENT surgeon combined with a skull-based neurosurgeon and we're talking about larger incisions and all these other things. That's your traditional surgery option of which there's some nuances to surgery that would be a whole nother Facebook Live discussion, but it's certainly something that many of you probably come across. And then there's the bucket called stereotactic radio surgery. So stereotactic radio surgery is a form of radiation that's done in, you know, usually one session and it's very, very precise radiation. And under that umbrella of stereotactic radio surgery is where a gamma knife sits, cyber knife, proton beam, all these different names for different ways to deliver that.